Curse lineup. We are going through champs like though the Rise, the Jax banned away from Curse, the Kha'Zix away from Meteos. I know Domin or not Domin sorry, uh, Saint says that Sin Zhao is actually the best jungler in the game right now. I want to see if this actually pulls through for these teams as well. There's, I mean, the junglers right now, there are so many junglers that are good. It's it's very hard to ban out junglers. Kha'Zix is definitely at the top, though. The one I'm really looking at here is a blue side ban of Jax. So Cloud9 do not look like they would want to first pick that ever. So uh, Ball's definitely known for being a very strong Renekton and Shivana player. Would much rather have one of those champions. We could always see a Rumble come out as well. He definitely has that one in his back pocket. Definite possibility, but it's going to be the Nocturne ban coming through there away from Meteo. So one conventional jungler, one Feral Flare jungler. First pick on Dilution goes through, though, for C9. Uh-huh. There's a lot of other good things open. You've got right the big bullies like Red and You've got uh, mid laners like Lulu still around. Yeah, AD carries aren't usually seen as, you know, first pick power picks. Yeah. Because they're very similar. However, Lucian is one of the AD carries in North America that's highly prioritized. Among Doublelift, among Sneaky, and Wild Turtle, the top three AD carries really prefer this champion, and he has had a great run in North America. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as Quickshot keeps saying, undefeated so far in playoffs, got banned last game. Mundo still coming through for Quas here, really liking this pickup, but Lulu does come through for Curse, and we'll see if that goes mid or support. Yeah, Lulu, definitely a flex pick. There's, it's interesting to me that both top laners right now still have Ignite as one of their summoners. Pretty sure that those will be swapped out at some point. Um, teleport, Heal, and Exhaust pretty much seem like the go-to new three power summoner spells to add on to your flash. Mm -hmm. I want to know if Hai actually learned more of the support mid laners. Lulu's taken away, Sorak has been banned. Has he learned the Karma? Does he have the Orion in his back pocket he can bring out here? Is that going to be the continued style for C9? That was what CLG was largely running. And yes, C9 does play some of those heavy supportive lineups, but do they have the aggressive ones, right? Elise jungle comes through for the first time here today. Uh, Morgana support, these are very standard things as of the last patch. Yeah, this is really interesting because we talked about how TSM, towards the end of the series, they fell back on comfort picks. Meteos has always loved Elise. He, they're immediately going right back to that champion, not uh, embracing the Pharaoh Flare. When I talked to him before, he was he was saying, yeah, in scrims, I definitely tried out the Pharaoh Flare. Like, he... They've actually used it several times, and they felt like, yes, we won some games with it, and it scales up really nicely, but if he was on another jungler with a spirit item, they could have won the exact same game, but earlier. So he feels like he can actually end the game much earlier with one of these champions going spirit items and foregoing all of the farm up. All right, so early power play jungler here for Meteos, kind of forsaking his old style of farm for 30 minutes and be the biggest factor in their team fight. Cop just keeps clicking Graves and Twitch. He's gonna settle in. It looks like on Graves here with Leona support coming in. So Graves making a big resurgence of 4.5 after the buffs and Bunny Foo Foo for his like 17th straight game on Leona. Yeah, basically every time Thresh is banned, picks into Leona. And I love Graves with Leona. This is one of the funnest kill lanes that there are out there. As soon as you hit level six, try and blow up somebody on the map. Whether it's a two versus two or a two versus one, they're gonna try and combo somebody. All right, they're going to go for the burst. We'll see what else they can put in here. They still need a jungler here on the curse lineup. I'm a little surprised to see it get picked last just because they had no reason to rush pick the Leona here. Uh, but with nothing to be contested, Cloud9 well, actually going to go pretty offensive there. Trundle going to match up against Mundo top lane and LeBlanc mid again. Yeah, the, the Leona into Morgana is uh, still an ongoing debate because there is outplay potential from both of the champions. So it definitely is uh, skill based. It's actually an interesting story. Uh, uh, talking with Saint, he said, you know, Bunny Fufu actually likes playing Thresh against Morgana, even though it's typically considered like a good for Morgana matchup because while the, the hook cooldown is so much lower than Black Shield, similarly, Leona's cooldowns are lower than Black Shield's cooldown. So like you do want to engage and Shield comes out, and you just try again before it comes back up. Yeah, the difference there is that when Leona uses her Zenith Blade, she's going in mm -hmm. and Thresh does not have to go in when he uses his hook. So he True. won't have to take damage there. Uh, but yeah, I do like Curse's lineup so far. They have so much wave clear. Lulu and Graves, even if it's a support Lulu, it would have uh, added enough wave clear, but it is going to be mid. So they've got tons of wave clear, tons of mid-game team fight potential. This is a beastly, 
mid-game team fight here from Team Curse. And again, this is something that they had success with in the previous series versus Dignitas. Hard engage with Leona, team fights, that's what they look for. They're trying to track Cloud9 down in the jungle, in the mid-game sometime, and kill them. Well, we'll see if Curse can do it. Xin Zhao does get picked up there in the jungle for I Will Dominate. And Curse gonna make as many rotations as they can, make all the moves, teleport heal there for Mundo as well. So that's like a standard summoner spells for that champion at this point. Mm -hmm. Cloud9 playing pretty much their normal stuff. I feel like Hyde doesn't play a ton of LeBlanc, but definitely a champion knows. He definitely likes that champion. Uh, he's pretty big on assassins, and it, they're not gonna go with the shield team fighting comp here. Nope. Um, running up against Curse, they are going to be looking more for picks with this. Morgana is a great champion for that. Uh, Lemon Nation, I'm pretty sure he had a full Morgana page in his uh, champion uh, game history. Mm -hmm. Just because he loves the champion so much, he's been playing it over and over and over. And the bindings have been on point from him. Yeah, he's been great. So the game's about to get underway. Let's check out who you guys are predicting to win. And according to lolesports.com, 83% of you are tipping this in Cloud9's favor. And remember, you guys can also vote on Twitter. Yeah, send us your pick by tweeting at LOL Esports and use the hashtag C9Win or CRSWin. We will be checking on the vote throughout the series. Yeah, remember to use the actual shorthand for those teams. We had a couple of guys tweet the full word of curse win. Yeah. Hashtag curse win actually won't Doesn't give work. you any vote. Yeah, it won't make <laughs> it a win anymore. Votes. But if you type CRS, it will. So keep that in mind, guys. C9 is least easier because it's the you know general shorthand for these guys. But just. Just so you all know about this one, we're getting ourselves now into game one of the second semifinals. Winner is going to face off against TSM tomorrow for a trip to the All-Star Invitational. Loser will fight CLG in the third place match. All right, so ward starts for both supports. Pretty common nowadays, getting that extra gold so you can have at least one true ward for the early game. Very important. Lemonation will have extra damage for the turret, but Leona can help execute, so... Also helping out in the shove if there is a two versus one, which it looks like it will be. Curse already have the duo up towards the top side. A little bit of vision there as well while Leon is placing the ward. Oh, I want to see what these guys do with this one. So High is going to wait around. And of course, if he gets caught, he's likely safe. He already actually has a point in distortion. I don't feel like High could die unless something catastrophic happens to him. Yeah. Worth pointing out, four summoner heals on Team Curse. Quas brought one, Voy bought one. Plenty of healing there in this one. Cloud9 actually only running one, sorry, only running two, just their duo lane, but the extra flash for balls and the ignite for high for the, the fight potential. Yeah, high has started distortion and lemon has started binding. Those are the only two spells that they have locked in so far. Two best spells for the early, early game here. Yeah. Lemon will be probably going for a late invade on blue then. And Curse definitely initiating the two-on-one lane swap with Lemonation and Balls both down here, but Sneaky making his way down as well. It's going to be C9 sending their duo lane to this side of the map. Medios also helping out, and C9 will invade towards the blue buff. Okay. Exact same for Curse. So both junglers are going to secure themselves the blue buff starts, and it will probably uh, turn into the 4-0 pushes after this uh, if everything plays out as normal. Perfectly mirrored map right now, by the way. Even the places where they they put their first wards mm -hmm. are even. So both of the teams talking about how they don't want to take any unnecessary risks. This is the most low-risk start to the games that teams have uh, been going with. We'll watch the first couple of moves here. Looks like Medios and Balls will take the Wolf Camp down, then go for the White. I will dominate and Quas. Start up the Wolves, and they'll be taken. They're a little the bit same. behind. They are a bit slower, actually. Yeah, the duo lane's getting the slow push going. There's level two. Cloud Nine's going to get there first. The second minion wave's now reaching the lanes. Actually, this might be third. I want to see if there's a cannon here. Nope, these are the second waves. Third ones have just spawned. Right. And so you were talking about, since we're seeing so many of these, Yeah. Um, you like when they push with the second wave and don't wait for the third wave. I think it's smarter. Because a lot of the minions get killed by your opponent's minions in the process of waiting. Yeah. Neither team waiting this time around, and they all do the four-man level two shove. This is, first time I saw it was Complexity Black from the Challenger League, actually. Yeah, I thought they were kind of the first team to show me it. There might have been other teams who learned the strat as well, but that was a team who, who put on the first good performance of that sort of situation, of that setup. It worked quite nicely. Curse, there we go, taking out the tier one turret there, but they're much slower than Cloud9. You're seeing great wave clear from Lemonation. Actually takes one minion with that one. 
But the push continues now, Cloud9 with a lead on this. Yeah, I don't think it will cost Curse much. They should be able to catch right back up, um, especially since the cannon minion timing was uh, the same for both. Uh, and it could do most of the tanking. They're actually going to be a few seconds behind, so we'll see if Cloud9 can actually capitalize on the few seconds lead. Moving forward after the turrets go down, you always want to watch where the big wave is going to go and how each team leaves the wave. Are they going to leave it pushing all the way into the turret so it builds up uh, more slowly, or do they leave it right after the turret? Well, Cop actually taking a bit of damage from Balls there. He finally takes the turret down, tries to deny as much as possible. Binding won't land. Sneaky about to do, this, do the same thing here. Takes the turret down. Wave's basically dead, but there's one minion left, mm -hmm. which could enable the smallest of freezes here for Quas. So, I really... I usually give the advantage to the team that's able to build up their wave first. And since both teams left it at the turret, it's going to be very close. But it looked like there was a little bit more down on the Cloud9 team. Because usually, you, whoever builds up that wave first is able to make the power move. The first choice in the game is everyone shoving with that giant wave and trying to either beat your opponents to that top turret and go for a dive on them or completely zone them out from the turret, in which case you gain the objective, you zone them out from the creeps, and it's a huge win. But the teams have adapted so well now that it's very rare for one of the teams to get beat to a position like that. They can recognize which wave is bigger and uh, get in place for defense quick enough. Well, right now, both these guys are in similar spots. You're seeing uh, those waves are around the white camp as they build forward. You're seeing Quas and Balls doing mirrored stuff right here. The duo lane's going to make their way towards mid. Actually, Void's going to switch and head to this solo lane, whereas Cloud9 seem to have their most of their team near the mid right here. So a bit of a different move, but Void's going to get more gold and XP this way, and he actually stops the push entirely. Yeah, so he's not even going to let that the push get to the turret, not even going to let Cloud9 push with it. Uh, the advantage of going something that's as safe as Lulu, who not only has amazing wave clear, but also a speed buff for herself, mm -hmm. is that he can extend himself like that. He's also got great ward coverage in the river already, so he is feeling very confident, and we won't see even the, the small amount of early action that we sometimes do see after these turrets go down. Yeah, it's going to be the rotation as well. Cloud9's bottom lane making the same move. They've held this one, so... We're going to have actually extended two-on-one lanes right here. We've got the two-on-one Curse's duo lane fighting up against High. On the bottom side, Sneaky Elimination will fight Quas. And a little bit of harassment in. High showing not very much fear and actually lasting yeah. under turret for the most part. I want to see if anyone really does get denied. Uh, you compare High versus Boy Boy, and actually this Lulu has a significant minion lead. Yeah, he did a good job. He got there very quickly um, to head off that minion wave. I have to say, High. When going in to harass a Leona Graves that are standing right next to each other, the only thing he's got to be worried about is the stun from Leona. If she can tag him quick enough when he comes in, then it's a huge amount of burst that he's going to lose in that trade, which would give uh, the other team control of Dragon. Right now, what Curse are trying to get is actually a teleport advantage, because forcing this, they force Cloud9 to choose. Do they want to burn their teleport down and come contest it? or have Trundle, who's a very slow wave pusher, stay up there. Well, a little bit of harass comes out. There's the TP, but maybe a bit late. late. Dragon goes down, but even with the front lines, there's a dive, but Cop will survive with this one. Sneaky on the back side of the fight force, a disengage from I Will Dominate. Now Voivoy locked up with the pillar. The Great Binding finds Bunny Fufu -Fu down to 200 health. The Leona flashes the wall. Voivoy leaving as well. Balls is gonna try. There's the distortion in for a hide. Does he get the damage? Void falls for first blood. Now Balls in the fight with Dominate. Dominate does not have flash. He gets the knockup though. There comes Cop, and the double kill comes through. High finding two. Two, and also Mundo had to use his teleport to escape, so he's gone top. Uh, teleport for teleport, both burned. I feel like Cloud9 played that pretty well because the early dragon does a lot of damage, but if they called for the Trundle teleport a few seconds earlier, then they might not have even given up the dragon. And they, Elise has a great chance of stealing a dragon if they actually go for this a bit earlier. So the actual team fight, though, after dragon's already dead and everyone is exchanging, Lulu's being chased by Dominate, who's not able to get anything, and it left Bunny Fufu on the front lines there. He got locked up. This is one of the classic uh, exit fights that we've seen over and over because of yeah. these early dragons. Everyone flashing over those walls, and that's the teleport I talked about, Quas getting out uh, on the bottom side. Two members, four dragon, even on the teleports, though. What's going to mean? It's a 1,000 gold lead for Cloud9 overall, though, so the early game 
has gone the way of the blue team. So one thing to keep in mind with this one. So we'll see where people move around. So far, it is going to be, of course, I know we talked about this in the early game, but um, Riggles, the build for I will dominate. El uh, Ancient Golem, standard for Meteos there. So far, Riggles not combined yet, though, nine minutes in. So mm -hmm. got to keep track of when that actually comes online. Yeah, Saint was actually saying that he kind of likes the swaps like this even when he's running a Feral Flare because you get that global gold from the turrets that go down so early that you can get such a quick Riggles that your clear speed is increased that much. You don't get too far behind on large jungle kills. Dominate, though, um, able to clear his jungle and then get ward coverage as well. Yeah, one thing I like is we talk about um, you know, the way people are playing builds and whatnot is that uh, all the LeBlancs I've seen are going for death by our grasp. That with, with, you know, there being so many summoner heals, people being very defensive and having shields, yeah. someone like LeBlanc needs more damage to get through that. And I haven't seen almost any Athene's LeBlancs. Yeah, especially since they rely on him for wave clear here as well in this mid game. He needs that AP for his distortion. So early needlessly large rod. I like the pickup for him going that route, um, as well as trying to get through the anti-assassin meta. Mm -hmm. um, I no mean, exhaust, though. it's all yeah. It is all. It is very scary for Hai to go for that wave clear when there's four people in front of him. But he's done a very good job so far as a mid lane LeBlanc holding on, mm -hmm. tied with Lulu. Yeah, he's caught right back up in minions. Uh, the other random build thing I want to point out, unless there's a nope, not too much of a battle. I looked at Quas's runes after the last game he played uh, on his Mundo, and he ran um, health per level seals and percent health quints. It's the first time I've actually seen those in competitive, but he opened up every single game, double ruby crystal, do a giant's belt. And the per level cooldown reduction on his yes. list. So yeah. all scaling runes there. He's a completely scaling Mundo. He's not going for any of the early game, which Mundo should not. So very yeah. good job by Quas. And you would expect nothing less from one of the main Mundo players that we've got in North America. And Curse, though, they get their team all the way down to the mid lane. The turret's going to go. Curse, find the third turret of the game, bringing the gold right back to equal here. Punishing balls for this freeze with Trundle. As I said, Trundle extremely slow at shoving waves anyway. So he very naturally goes with these slower pushing side lanes. And with a teleport down, there's no way for Cloud9 to answer. As we said, they have very risky wave clear in mid, if any at all. And uh, Curse do a great job of punishing for that. You know, Curse picked up all this crazy wave clear of Lulu and Graves very early, left not that much for Cloud9 to go with. Well, we'll see then what Cloudon can do then, because Sneaky's off on this side of the map, shoving just the wave up, but he's not really defending a turret. He's just getting farm and then leaving the lane again. So Cloud9 splitting their farm pretty equally across all the rolls. 77, 75, 77. Pretty similar here for Curse. So no one's gotten, at least no one's got like long-term freezes, right? Like no one's been able to sit there and get 100 minions over 11 minutes and just sit there getting everything. It's been a little bit more opportunistic. People leave their waves when there's some gank pressure. Ball's here with only a little bit of ward coverage. Got to be slightly careful, but so far he's still sitting near one by his dry brush. Yeah, it's mostly been that Curse have been able to kill minions quicker in order to then make their movements over towards that mid turret. And they did a great job, but look at this. Cloud9 did the exact same thing. When Curse go back to buy, they make their move up mid. It's exposed. They have plenty of damage. They're going to try and answer this turret. They've, all, they've got a long way to go to get through it, though. You've seen the wave go just enough here for Curse. This turret's going now actually down fairly low. I'm not sure if Cloud9 can stay. Looks like they yeah, will. Get it. No Curse. graves there. Exactly. Yeah, outnumbered Cloud9. Not allowing Curse to go in. Curse knowing they'd go in and die if they did. Sweeper use kills the ward off. High only level 8, though. It's going to be a 2-minute cooldown, not a 1-minute cooldown on that trinket. Wish they had a little bit more experience. Could sweep twice as many wards right now. So close. Now, really those two kills are pretty much the... Only difference in this game, mirrored strategies so far for the first 13 minutes coming out. Another big difference is that Feral Flare. Mm -hmm. uh, Dominate has been able to get his Wriggles, but since they were pushing turrets so often, hasn't oh, been able to stack blank. it up very much. Good teleport in. Not so going in. Bunny people low on health. Here comes Balls and Quas. Their damage goes on to the support of Curse. Going to let him disengage. High. 
Knock right to the back line, sends the clone in. Voivoy in the middle as well. The jump forward. I will dominate, looking for the kill onto Hive, but gets Cocoon across the wall. Meteos finds the first kill, but it's traded back by Quas. Meteos forced to run still. The ulti from Lemonation, gonna be a three man stun, but he's not got a lot of places to go still. Meteos slowed down. Quas still massively disruptive in this mid game. His ulti's finally timed out, but it's gonna be enough. A double kill high goes down. Four kills for Curse. Mundo, the massive health tank. Soaking up a lot in that fight. And look at Quas. That is a sign of a well played Mundo. He used everything teleport, heal, and his ulti, and gets out with only a sliver of life, still able to help with the dragon. So, Balls, like as you said, he called out the flanking teleport. It's a good move, but all of the burst and the skill shot CC used on the support of Curse, plus they don't even finish off the kill because of the heal summoner. After High uses all his burst on the support, He's free for Dominate to go aggressive on, and they get him very low. Even though Dominate does go down in the end, there's that Munda that we talked about. Lemon Nation tries to uh, stick everybody with his ulti, and he gets four people. Second proc stuns three, which is a really strong ulti from Morgana. However, the whole team uh, not able to put out damage while he's stunning up the rest of Curse. And they do go down. As I said, the mid-game team fight for Curse is beastly. We shot in action there. That's what we were talking about in Champ Select. So it's a 600 gold lead for Curse. Woo! High. Woo. Gets the ward down immediately. It's like, oh, we got Zamunda. Peace is out. Good distortion. Yeah. More like a ditch distortion. He's like, get the heck out hey of yo. there. Hey, Yeah. Mixed, mixed uh, <laughs> reviews on that one. Mixed reviews. That's all I'm going for. <laughs> it was not universally booze. I've succeeded with this one. Now, they also got the large wave top uh, that Trendle was sort of uh, slow pushing. And Quas has been able to soak that one up. As we talked about before, Quas going with a full scaling Mundo. Mm -hmm. He will get very strong fairly quickly here. Um, and it is going to be up to Balls to always use his ulti on Dr. Mundo, or I will dominate after Dominate has used his ulti. We get those extra resistances. Yeah. And I want to know, actually, like, so hold on, this is going to be actually kind of rough for Ball. See, will he survive this fight? The Agony's Embrace is on. There's the ulti popped as well. He only has Cutlass. That's going to be the stun coming down for Bunny Foo with the push in. Ball's not in a good spot at all. Completely locked down. Down to one quarter health. Trying to run away. Pillar comes out, but that trophy might whoa, not whoa, be whoa. quite nine. Doesn't quite deck down. Quas kill picked up for the top laner there of Curse. And every single game, Quas opens up with component items. Always up a Ruby Crystal, always a Giant's Belt. No rush for the Sunfire Cave, just gets tanky. Yeah, extremely tanky, and he's able to continually slow Balls. Balls had wards, by the way, up this top line, but Bunny Fufu came with a nice little sneaky gank right behind him and was able to get in position. So it looked like Quas definitely had the upper hand there, but he would not have been able to get that kill without Bunny Fufu. Good roaming gank from the support. Able to get Curse back another kill and edge them just over the the 24 mark, so he can get the gold lead back. Yeah. But Cloud9, they actually managed to steal the blue buff away with all that happening, even though it was only 3v3 on the bottom side of the map. Play still was, ha you know, the play was still made, so. It's worth pointing out, though, in TSM versus CLG in the first couple of games. CLG was a team that got the turrets, got the dragons, and TSM stole the, stole the golems, you know, the golems, the red buffs, and it didn't matter. Well, Cloud9, stealing buffs away, but. If they don't control major, major global objectives, it might not be enough. High gets slowed down, has the distortion now. And it's not hurting Dominate too much. He's doing a good job of clearing the small camps to stack up his Barrel Flare. Almost ready for conversion here. 23. 23 stacks. Yeah, so he's looking at like an 18 minute combine right there, which is a pretty good clip. For the two versus one, yeah. Uh, Lemonation showing off his Morgana skills there. So many games put in. Trying to get the aim down perfect. Let's see what the next move from Cloud9 are because it seems like they've got more early game pick oriented style here. They've got good ward coverage in Curse's jungle. So what they would like to do is try and capitalize on that and catch people who are out of position with that Elise, with that LeBlanc, with the Morgana. However, at all the shoving, they haven't been able to get anyone out of position from Curse. It's actually been Curse who have been coming up with the ganks, and Curse that are coming up with the picks. Yeah, they're absolutely the team making the moves here. It's weird, like Cloud9 seemed very, very reactive, very passive in this game, unlike the team that's coming in as the number one seed. I mean, Cloud9, the clear favorites. 
They've won split after split. Well, they've won They've won the only split they've been a part of. The number one seed in this one. It's true. I mean, Curse are a very big underdog coming into this, but we talked about how relaxed they look after they finally beat Dignitas. It gave them so much momentum, took so much weight off of their shoulders, and they're playing much better than they even did in that series. Coming yeah. in here, they're looking very strong. Yeah, I don't see really any major mistakes. Feral Flare done now, 1828. Gonna be higher damage there, I will dominate. Not getting too greedy with the build. It's gonna be Hex Drinker into Merc Treads, nose with a lot of magic damage, some stuns. Roots on a bunny foo foo, but that is a durable LeBlanc. Like, that's the only guy that C9's getting any poke on. Otherwise, Cloud9 are basically treading water in lanes and waiting for dragons till things happen. Yeah, that Shin Sao is looking pretty good right now. If he's able to move in towards a uh, Randuin's, he will be a strong tank right alongside Quas. And tanks are very strong right now. We say it's the, the anti assassin meta. Because there's so many heals going on, the tank stats are really, really effective. All these resistances, you get so much health to work with that you're getting back. That a strong tank, tank line scaling is you know, just as good as a hyper carry almost nowadays. Yeah, and, and I'm wondering actually if that's going to eventually change the AD carry picks or, or even mid laner picks to guys who have more percent health damage. Like, what happens when Malzahar becomes a top pick mid laner because he can kill Moodle? Like, that's not out of the realm of possibility. I mean, we see champions come up out of nowhere all the time. Mid lane Karma got a pentakill today. Yeah, well, we already see some sort of reaction. I mean, Cloud9 did lock in Trundle, so he can bust one of those yeah. tanks. Problem for them is that there are two of them. There True. will be two of them. There will absolutely. Quas gonna pop the ulti to get away from this one. Dodges the chain. Hi. Oh, over for two. Both, actually, Cocoon also gonna get juked away. And Quas uses the time to buy his team a dragon in the bottom side of the map. Cloud9 will get a turret with the three, but a mid game dragon worth more than 650 gold. And as Saint keeps pointing out with the junglers with Pharaoh Flare, the thing is, when the junglers go and they try and clean up scraps on areas where the team is weak, that's where you're making the wrong move as a Pharaoh Flare. You need to go to an opposite side of the map and take something else. You can clear dragons so fast if the team go top for your red buff or for your top turret. You go and you exchange. You don't try and clean up the remnants of your destroyed top lane. You take something somewhere else. We'll see what these guys can take right here. Sneaky. Gonna take the mid lane. Medios is back on his base. He bought again early ages pickup for him. And also cooldown boots. I don't see those hyper often on an Elise. Normally you see the rush to Sork Shoes, maybe the haunting guys afterwards, but Medios saying, you know what? We'll out tank you guys. Let's grab more defensive stuff. You know what it is? It's actually the new Elise scaling into late game because the cocoon actually stuns for longer. Yeah. He can get more cocoons off now um, that scale up to two seconds stun. And they're really looking for those picks. He's playing completely utility Elise. Not only is it the cooldown reduction, uh, also that magic resist aura, which will also add more cooldown reduction when he upgrades it into Locket. Yeah. He's trying to provide that CC for his team. Utility Elise. Well, interesting. We'll see how it turns out here. Because he does have a, a decent health pool as well. Yeah. You know what else uh, I just realized as well? You were talking about Trundle being picked up. Elise and Identifier Grasp also have percent health damage. Mm -hmm. Like, Quas will have like 5k health end game, and there's 3% health damage champions right now on Cloud9 who can maybe make a dent in that. Maybe they need Void Staff to make that happen first. Yeah. But... If he doesn't have that penetration, it will be harder. But you're sure. right. I, I do like the trend. We'll see. So far, Dominate not actually buying much health. It's actually all in shields and regeneration. Also a good point to keep in mind. Void Boy as well with shields. All similar situations. Bunny Fufu also going towards Locket. So shields and reductions right now the case. And Dominate this is for... a dead even game with a slight vision advantage for Cloud9. Curse uh, might be getting into a little trouble there. Dominate was trying to come for a side gank without vision control. That's pretty dangerous to do, especially against a team like Cloud9, who do ward their jungle um, very, very often. You can see the two defensive pink wards that are very common for this team. And those mid-game team fights very well could break out around those pink wards. As I said in the last series, defending pink wards is one of the main ways that you do get picks towards the mid-game nowadays. Oh, right now it's gonna be a little bit of poke going back and forth, Sneaky. Not going to get picked off at all here. 216 minions on him, actually. Cloud9 are starting to funnel a bit of their gold towards the AD carry. When Sneaky gets towards four items, Last Whisper, Infinity Edge, that will be a much more powerful champion. I think it's likely he goes Phantom Dancer and not Triforce there. It's the better late game build, and it seems like that's where this game is heading. 
but Zeal does build on the both. We'll see where he goes. Five man move here from Curse. Now finally committing to a move on the map, getting that Baron cleared out. There's a bottom uh -oh. lane that's pushing against them though. Curse have to be careful. They made this, this mistake before against Dig. They commit towards mid when they had side lanes pushing. This time around though, they've got Cloud9's attention and they are not going to be out positioned. And right now, Curse have the inside track on the Baron area. The bottom lane just has a gigantic mini wave pushing on him. That's totally safe though. No champions heading that one up and it's just going to be easy defense for Curse here. What's hilarious? <laughs> Everybody's cracking up. No idea what happened. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Cloud9 are safe. Pushing up the mid lane. Uh-oh, Voyboy Boy puts the whimsy on. Teleport in from the back lane as well. Quas will engage the fight. Here we go. Quas locked down, but gets the ulti and Cocoon coming across. There comes I Will Dominate, hits three. A big burst comes through, does not quite catch Voyboy Boy though. Elimination healing himself. Boy, he will almost drop. He does one for zero, but Cloud9 start to melt. Two for one so far. Actually, Cloud9 still staying ahead. Cop puts the damage on. He finds high. Quas falls down. Sneaky. Forced to run, he does stay alive. Lemonation and Meteos find the cleanup, actually. Cloud9 crushing the battle. Bunny Fufu -Fu trying to run away, but C9 actually gonna go five for one in that fight. Well then, 24 minutes in, Cloud9 get an ace out of a completely even game. The teleport in the back for Mundo, he takes a lot right now. Four members focus on him. There's that percent damage focus that you talked about with Elise. Getting him down low. He gets popped right back up with Lulu. Uh, but they don't have a lot of the follow-up damage after this. And the focus on Devoy Boy getting caught up there in the middle really was a turning point. Dominate also going down at the same time. Cop was trying to flash in to make sure somebody on Cloud9 died, but they only got one kill. This, yeah. this utility Elise from Meteos, again, I want to point it out because at the mid game, it's extremely strong with uh, the aura that he's providing to the team, as well as a cooldown reduction. And I gotta say, I was very impressed by Sneaky in that fight as well. He is the number two highest damage dealer to champions in the LCS, mm -hmm. and the lowest uh, deaths in North America. And you saw him get focused initially by Dr. Mundo, kite back, and then stay in the battle the entire time. Yeah, Mundo kind of gave up his mission. He on, turned back towards on high. On following towards Sneaky there, yeah. And he turned back towards high. Now, uh, he did actually, Sneaky did pick up the Trinity Force, so he's not going for that later game build you're talking about with the Fan Dancer. Mid-game power, they just want an ace, they want to push it. Oh, boy, with the knockups gonna stop the distortion there. Quas Force to disengage, pops his ulti for that one. Does have Spirit Visage and a Sunfire, but Cloud9, they own the mid lane right now. They're gonna move in tier two turrets, gonna be theirs. Curse will not stop for Dragon. They're gonna have to recall to the base and defend the inhibitor. Yeah, I mean, Cloud9's strengths have been the movements around the map as well as the team fights. And they showed right there, great job reacting to the teleport in from Mundo. Curse initiated the fight, and they destroyed them. Wow! Gigant With this bear, and they do it again. And it's going to be Bunny Fufu going down as well. The engage from I will dominate. Backfires here. Quas also under fire. Meteos finds a stun on a Voidboy and just goes in for it. Dodges the buckshot. Damage goes through. Quas falls 3-0 plus mid inhibitor for Cloud9. Just a dominating performance for Cloud9. Again, this time, Curse trying to force the fight. Wow, Cloud9 have Baron buff. And man, the DFG, the Elise, and the Trundle are enough to deal with uh, the Mundo here from Quas. He got that one mid-game team fight where he was a beast around Dragon, and they were able to come out with a pretty big lead, but now Cloud9 have a very dominating lead. And there's the Void Staff that we were looking for. Yep. For Medios, his percentage damage now will be hitting home on Quas. Finishes the lock at two for good measure. All right, Dominate gets annihilated when he goes in. Maybe he should have got second item tank item instead of going with that Hex Drinker. There, it does provide a nice shield, but that's not nearly enough to help him survive through this one, especially with Sneaky getting so much money in that last fight. The Bloodthirster Trinity Force combo is such a ridiculous mid-game physical damage spike you need to have some sort of physical resistance. He's got a Warden's Mail, but not a lot of health to back that up. And he can have all this, the sustain in the world he wants with his W and with his Feral Flare, but he's not getting attacks off, so it doesn't mean anything. I mean, Last Whisper is also already done for Sneaky. Sneaky is now an item ahead of the tank line at this point. 
which is which is exactly what you want. Is okay. I've got last. Whisper, I've got last whisper before Rand was done. That means you've got this great power spike as an AD. If Sneaky stays safe, then Infinity Edge comes in before Thorn Mail, and that you just stay ahead as the AD carry. You're gonna kill things, of course. Meteos and High also posing great threats. Balls added Blade of the Ruin King. All these things adding up to killing the front line. Even yeah. Lemonation is ready to dive in there. He's got a Zonius. And he has been, too. He's had some very strong multiple enemy uh, ultis that he's gotten off in these fights. Cloud9 making some adaptations that we were not expecting coming yeah. into this one. Uh, this is not the direction that we thought they were going to go with, but it's working ridiculously well. You know what I really like about the... Um, not only the Morgana pick, but the, the Zonia's Hourglass as well. Mm -hmm. Quas, Dominate, Bunny Fufu have in buttons, but not out buttons. They pretty much can't get out of Morgana ulti. Yeah, they were banking everything on this being like a strong team fight. They, they look really brawly here. But the way that Cloud9 are dealing with this are with the builds and with that percentage health damage working so well. Just locking everybody up there. Lemon Nation. There comes the dive. I will dominate, getting a bit of support. And they do get the immediate kill on the support. One for one so far. Bunny Fufu taking a bunch of pain, sneaking the back line. He does find another. It's double kill for Meteos, but now Cloud9's battle lines pushing forward. Curse on the retreat. Quas down to 1,000 health, gets the heal, does escape. Balls holds tower aggro. That's enough for his team to keep the push going. Four versus three. Cocoon is going to miss the wave. There comes in. Curse going to stay alive, but they're already Nexus losing one. turret number two. It's taking a little bit of damage. Looks like that will just survive, but yes, Curse have already lost one of their Nexus turrets. Of course, that mid and hit was already dead. Yeah, I mean, uh, Cloud9 coming out strong once again. Very calm early game. 24 minutes before that first ace that they were able to get mid. And Curse were not expecting that at all. Just jumping into the fight, they were the ones who tried to cut off Cloud9 and force it. See, this time again, they try and force it. Dominate goes in first. They burst down uh, Lemon, and they actually knock him up so that he can't Zanya's late. And they take him down before he's able to even use it. But it doesn't matter. They spent so much time taking him out. Cloud9 are able to focus their damage and force Curse to back off. It was a good choice by Balls. He realized the, the chase was done, but waited, knowing that he had turret aggro. It's like, hi, get out of there. Get away from turret range. Okay. And then, like, once they all left, he pieced out. Like, there's, a, there's so much team fight awareness for all the members of Cloud9. Everyone knows their own role. Balls held turret aggro, and Matri didn't drop it all fight long, being the big tank for his team. So many smart things going on here. Double cooldown this boots, Meteos and Elimination, both tons of CC comes out of those roles. Yeah, this game really has been all about those team fights. Um, those would be good to review for mo most of the teams in the LCS, yeah. actually. Cloud9 really putting that on display. So, 13-7 to 7 now, winning in this game. 10,000 gold lead for these guys. It's going to be nice. Meteos with the finish lock. I'll talk about that one, though. 25 CDR and items. It's going to bring many more cocoons into these fights. Now he's level 15. He's back to a one and a half second stun with that spell. Mm -hmm. Only gets better for here, from here. Yeah. Balls has rank 3 ultimate. That's a big, big point. They nerfed Elise's early game and gave him that utility buff later. And Midos just plays right into it. It's his favorite champion. He's like, okay, you're changing the direction of the champion. And they're so fluid. Cloud9 accept it and they take it and they just run with it here. Getting that Void Staff so that he can actually still do damage while providing everything else for the team. All right, this is another flank from Curse, forcing another fight here. Trundle gonna teleport in though. Dark finding, Cocoon's gonna land as well. Quas runner towards the back lines down extremely low on health though, has to disengage. Dominate gets a nice ulti across. Here comes the team fight. The front line though, so low from Curse Balls, taking it through. Two kills to Cloud9 so far. Bunny Foo who forced to retreat. Boy Boy also getting chased down. There's gonna be three kills. It's gonna be four kills. Cloud9 crushed the fight. Yeah, again, Curse just keep on forcing the fight over and over. Five men, Cloud9 always reacting to it. Very, very well. Lemon actually lands a good binding to start it off. Oh, flash uh, pillar there. I thought it was because of a surrender, but it is not. Cloud9 will go on the Nexus turrets. Here we go, turret number one. Actually, the final turret, I gotta say, of the Nexus, no one is alive except for Cop. He's just chilling. We're in a beach towel, but this is gonna be game one going to Cloud9. Nicely played. Such a clean game from him. Yeah, so calm. The early misstep there around Dragon did cost them. Uh, Mundo was able to go where he pleases for the first 10, 15 minutes. Yeah. But at 24, he bit off more than he could chew, and Curse sort of returned to it.
forcing three fights in a row, losing all three consecutively. And it's a very quick cleanup for the game after that. Yeah, the game was over before 33 minutes in, so after that first team fight, it ended within 10. You're seeing Cloud9 grouping up, doing a quick huddle. Yeah, yeah. Make sure they know what they want to do for the next game right here, saying, okay, you know, we look at the analysis, yeah. we see what Curse wants to do. And Quas still had a good game, it just seems like there wasn't the follow-up when he did engage, when he was that tank. The damage didn't show up. Yeah. They did not have 